My Hero Academia. <laughs> you, I've said it <laughs> weirdly because this is the first time since we started reviewing it where I think both of us kind of agree. Eh. Uh, why don't you start out here, Thurman, on the eh. Um, so... I'm not gonna say it. Here, here. Before, like, before this all happens. Yeah, right? before just, you click away, please hear us out. We love my hero. It's his favorite. Saying, I love my hero. I mean, it's my it's my second. But I'm gonna say that I'm not gonna say these chapters are bad. They're far from bad. In fact, they're just boring. It's just you know, it's like it's not like. Oh, wow, uh, they're doing this, 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 and this. Oh, you know, I I do. I will say, however, I do like. Uh, let me go to the, get. To, here. I do like it, it is care like not character development but upgrade. I, I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah, especially uh, yeah. Let's talk about let's talk about him rip. So so in order to you upgrade yourself with that quirk by ripping out your muffler, and in this instance, your muffler you could be compared to like an appendix or something. It's a biological organ in your body so you gotta fucking essentially per like just rip it out and like oh god it's horrible like that's pretty fucking gruesome when you think about it as like an organ yeah man he was ripping that shit out <laughs> he was just ripping rip 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 so um what kind of got, what kind of got me interesting here is that like so in his family it seems like two generation generations they have the same quirk regardless well, see, right. that, that so, happens sometimes, and it's interesting, and I hope that um, Horikoshi delves into it more uh, later down the line. But, like, sometimes you see, like, like with, um, I think, uh, Suyu's family, they're all frogs, you know? And that, that's kind of been passed on the line. Um, and then sometimes it's a little bit unrelated. Like, or, like n not entirely un unrelated. Like, I believe, um, what was it? Wasn't Bakugo's parents like one of them had the nitroglycerin sweat, the other one had like sparks or something, and then they combined to make what Bakugo has, you know, or something like that, right? I don't remember. I have it, to something back. like that. I'm pretty sure. So like, so, point, so, point so, point, so point, genetic. Yeah. Well, so it's strange how it happens. I hope that he goes deeper into it. Like, it kind of reminds me. Um, what he needs to do now, Horikoshi, is he needs to pull an Oda. Like, do you remember when Oda? When we went into, in One Piece, we went into Fishman Island arc, Oda immediately was like, oh, by the way, um, you know, the genetics with Fishman are weird. Basically, like, you can have a fucking, you know, shark Fishman and a swordfish Fishman have a baby, and it can be a fucking puffer fish. Like, it, you know, as long as it's some, somewhere in their genetic history there was a puffer fish, that can happen. And basically that was his storyline excuse for being able to just draw whatever you know, breed he wanted to, or race he wanted to, without worrying about, oh, does that make sense? So I think Horikoshi, yeah. he's a, he's really smart in making things make sense and actually, like, feel like it's a real world. I'm pretty sure he could come up with a good um, excuse as to why this happens, uh, quirky yeah. genetic wise. So I'd be curious to see that. So, aside from that, I actually say I really like any of this chapter, man. I, I like I like yeah. his... He, I, I really, I would say, I, I, uh, he kind of did himself this, ch this chapter. Uh, it's... Because I, I personally like Eddie as a character. His fucking his personalities. It's like something that I'm very, very it's very compelling, right? I've been so. told um, in a recent conversation on Discord with our artist, who is responsible for the lovely logo and profile pictures you see here. I was talking right. to her, and we were doing one of those like, who in My Hair Academia is most like you personality wise, and shit like that. And she told me I was the most like Ida, <laughs> and I was like. You're not wrong. <laughs> kind of. I definitely go on long-winded rants about, like, morality and what you should do. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I feel like I have to like him because he's uh, maybe a little bit of me. You don't have to like him. <laughs> no, you're right. I, I He's always been one of the more boring characters to me, but I respect, I respect him a bit more now that I'm, like... You're him. Maybe, maybe that's why I don't like him. I've never really, you know, you never really, at least most people don't like themselves. You know what I mean? Like, I don't like who I am. <laughs> Let's get deep oh, yeah. here. I, I uh, hate myself. Good? Oh, uh, yeah, I hate myself, so. <laughs> Getting depressing here on Controlled Chaos. Um, but, Thurman, here's what I want to ask. You said in the beginning of this video, and we kind of agreed on this, that this chapter is a little meh for you. What, what's the reasoning here, in your mind? It's... It's kind of like all over the place, right? There's um, 
it's like besides like the idiot stuff which i like it's we're already we're already doing something that i hoped it wasn't like we're focusing on idiot and Tor- and Toridoki, which is mm-hmm. something which my, my i was hoping because they had like tail guy ojiro had had his moment yeah. so. i definitely but, have some things to say about ojiro so I'm like nope uh, horikoshi uh, here has a um a, a potential spot here to emphasize these two characters that haven't gotten shit in the entire series, right? And he chooses to have Idia save uh, or G- oh, oh, I hate names, man. The tail dude. Um, <laughs> he, you know what I mean? Like, he, he saves him. And, and like, the, he, when we, you know, pan over to what the tail dude's doing, he's on the ropes. And it's like, oh no. <laughs> like, like, you're not helping his character in the eyes of the fandom. Like, typically, when you're an author and it's been, I don't know, years since a character's done anything when they come back they'll it'll be a big like they're doing something awesome moment but so far you're right it's been kind of concerning how little they've had to do now at the end of this chapter Todoroki does tell um the tentacle um body part dude to go and do something um, and maybe that'll pan out into something next chapter what do you yeah think? I, I will say is that like the, the two highlights for me this this chapter where Idiot doing something, I really like how Idiot has speed and everything, I'm like... Ten minutes, hey. too. Ten minutes of, like, according to him, ten minutes of untouchable speed. Like, unstoppable. Like, you can't fuck like, with me, I'm too fast. Like, my favorite good. part, like, my favorite part of this is, like, he's, like, the star, he's like, here we go. Damn, bitch. <laughs> yeah, like, you can't control yourself. It's like, it's, and then the, 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 their exchange here confuses me, it's like... Honiki escaped. Should you, you know how troublesome he is? Should you interfere with a one on one fight? And then, like, he's like, my brother will do the same thing. I'm like, okay, well, I- I'm kind of confused. Like, Spyro, do you're upset because he stopped a one on one fight in a team fight? I like, assume, well, okay, th- this this um, Spiral guy, he seems to be one of those people that he he's probably like one of those people that really likes like fist to cuff type type fighting like all right him and i were having like a kung fu martial arts style battle here and i think that he wanted that to be seen through to the end you know what i mean and i think that what idiot is saying here is igni- igni- ignium ig- ignium fucking yes. words um his brother the way he would have been, uh, the, the, when he was a pro hero, I'm going to assume that he was the type that maybe would have seen, like, let's say there was a, two gang members fighting in the, you know, on a fucking street. Like, he's not just going to be like, yes, we'll let them fight it out. No, ignigium fucking words. <laughs> you know, it's a word I can't say, I've just discovered. Um, it, he would just fucking, like, he, he probably would just blitz over there and just, and just take one, you know, separate them. Like, that does kind of strike me as what that kind of hero would do. So I, I, I could see it when he said that. It's, it's just like, okay, well, okay. Idiot, I think the whole point was to not be your brother after the whole staying situation. Now he's like, no, brother, I brother. think he wanted to kind of like hold, like, like hold up the, I never think, I don't think he ever want, not wanted to be his brother. He just wanted to stop being, you know, revenge driven. No, but I'm saying, I thought his whole motive was to get, get revenge, but I'm saying like, I, I I don't know. It's, I don't remember him ever saying he he was like I'm not going to be my brother. His his literal hero name is like Ignigium. Fuck. My point. My point is Ignigium two or point something point, like that. My point is. <laughs> yeah. I would like it if Idia wanted to be the type of character that wanted to not be like. My brother would have done the same thing, type thing, because I, I, I see him as no, something. No, but... certainly like he's definitely one of those people that's like, um, he's kind of idolizing his his brother to an unhealthy that's degree. Fine. That's fine. That's fine. But I'm saying like I thought Hirokoshi was building him up to be something. Well, he probably still oh. is. I think that this might still be part of his um character flaw. Because to me, it seems like he's idolizing his brother to an unhealthy degree. Um, you know, I mean, we saw this when when Stain fucked with him. His immediate thing was like, oh, like it was like he fucking injured his personal god. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like that was kind of the almost like a parallel with Stain there, because Stain was like freaking out every time someone you know d- disrespected he- heroism. So the way I look at it here is, I think that if Horikoshi goes the direction I expect him to, Idia here. He's still too focused on being his brother, and I imagine at some point his brother will have a talk with him and be like, "Don't be me, be your own person." I hope so. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> and 
always talk about how Minata is going best friend right. status right now. Hirokoshi, Hirokoshi. Look at the internet. He's like, everyone gets <laughs> people want him to stop being a perv. <laughs> Confirm. I swear to God, if he is in caves and makes him stop being a perv, I would that would, that would literally ruin ruin not ruin it for me, but kind of. If Minata is not a perv, the series is over. Because it's just like. Pervert characters have been a staple of no, longest. No, bro, I don't think yeah. anyone made him not make him a perv. I do think, however, and again, this is still pending the official translation. I have not looked at it. But I do think that the line where he kind of hit on a fucking eight-year-old potentially went a little too far. <laughs> I'm still... <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, by the way. When he was talking to, uh, what's her fucking name? The, the, the girl that they were saving in the... Yeah, I know. You know that. that happened. So it's like I, I honestly swear to God, wonder if if that was a moment where they were like, "Horikoshi, like my dude, chill, relax." <laughs> <laughs> they may have given him like a fucking probation on perv jokes with Manetta for like a year after that one. <laughs> I, I'm just saying that people who complain about Manetta, but like Jirai or Master Roshi, yep. uh, uh, his characters to shut the fucking mouth. I mean, so just to play devil's advocate, Mineta <laughs> takes it to way farther than those characters. Like <laughs> he does. No, no, he does. He does. I mean, because the his, his is different. played up in a lot more of a realistic sense, right? So, like, like when he's literally going over and like s- s- wafting a scent from the panty drawer, it's like. What the fuck, man? I think the creepiest is when they were doing the whole room show off thing, and Minetta was like, "Come into my room to see something amazing." Like uh, he, it gets to a level where it's almost like, "Bro, relax." <laughs> you know what I mean? Bro. Like, um, and, and I don't. It does not bother me in the slightest. But um, I have talked. I, I know many women who read this series, and they all universally hate Minetta. Um, and I can't blame them because he is a little freaky. Uh, again, I, I don't hate him as a character. I find him funny for the most part. I do think that Horikoshi takes it a little further than like most. So like, if you were to like count out like the amount of perv jokes Jiraiya made, and then it's like it, I think to me it's how often they're done and how severe they are, right? I mean, if you want, you want to be honest with this, Jiraiya has done way severe stuff. Like this man goes into the hot spring, the tsunade. Fucking- like, come on, like, like she so does Minata, but, I mean, bro, like... You, you see, I, no, I agree with you, man, but what I'm saying is you can't deny that, like, it's, done, deny it's done in a more realistic way with Minetta. Like, like it's almost the subtlety makes it worse, because, like, with Jiraiya, he's so over the top about it, where it's, like, it's so clearly played up for comedy. But some of the things Minetta says are legitimately, like, there was no punchline to that, you're just being a freak. Like, again, I have no desire for it to stop. I don't give a shit. But I am going to acknowledge the fact that most people, even Tekking has pointed this out, and he is one of the biggest self-admitted pervs, Minetta takes it really far. <laughs> like, creepily I, far. Maybe maybe I'm just different at characters because they're funny as fuck. But, I don't know. I guess it's... Yeah, I'm not gonna deny that his pervertness is, but I'm I'm just saying Again, like I don't want you to misinterpret my point. I find him funny too, and I have defended his character on multiple occasions. The only point I'm making here is that he is the level of if you cannot compare in my mind, he he is different from Jiraiya and other pervert characters because Jiraiya Roshi like yes. I, oh yes no. like um, oh my god you say the like bruh like come on now. Like, oh, like, people are going to say Mineta is bad. So I'm looking at my My Academia poster, how beautiful it is, and my My Academia manga volumes right here. Anyway. No, I don't know. It's just, I, yeah, he, he, it's taken a bit far with him, I think. I I think that to me it was the, it, there was a point with Mineta's character where that was all he was. And I think that Horikoshi is trying to. I, but, because, yeah. when it comes to Mineta, right, I think that that it's the perfectness a perfect character's perfectness is all uh like um comedy for instance sanji isn't as bad as Manetta, of course but he's not uh, always doing it and typically his perversion comes out through um 
overdone chivalry, which is why I like Sanji. Like, so, like, but like, but you can but besides like his pervertedness, fucking amazing character, right? Like, M- Mineta has had moments to where like, even earlier in the series when he was him Asui and Deku, like, like Mineta fucking played his part. Yeah, you know. Well, like, yeah, and so, I think that there needed to be more of that because, in my mind, as of recent until now, when he's kind of making him be a normal person again, which I kind of like, there had been moments where. He, he was starting to fall into, like, the Simpsons territory. And what I mean by that is I'm sure you've read up on, like, what makes the Simpsons so bad now. What Something that happens when you run into a really long-running series is that the characters stop being characters and start to fall into caricatures of themselves. You know what that means, right? So, like, Homer Simpson, at the very beginning of that show, he was a dude who happened to be dumb. You know, a dumbness was part of his personality, but not all of it. Now now episodes, it's he's, he's the dumb one, you know. Um, you know, it's, you know what I'm saying? Like, like they Family become man. their character. They become their character quirk and, instead of it be, being a part of them. So mm-hmm. for a while there, in my mind, there was a point where Horikoshi just every time Mineta was on screen, it was for a perverted joke. I like that he's taking the opportunity and time now to make that more of a part of his character and less of an every time he shows up, there's a joke because I'm sure I... we'll get one when when the opportunity arises. Uh, but I like that as of now, he's just having a normal conversation with Deku because I think that makes him look more like a real person. I have no issue with perverted jokes. I'm just saying I think Horikoshi did have an issue with going a bit further than other mangaka did, especially with that creepy one with the, you know, the little girl. <laughs> I, need to, I need to fucking see that. Do you not remember? Okay, I need to get it back up. I, it, it, <laughs> uh, what he said, it was, uh, what the fuck? Why am I blanking on her name? The little girl. Ellie, or I mean... Something. Airy. Airy. Yeah. Okay. Boom. Airy. They were bringing Airy to the uh, to the festival or whatever. It was you know like the it was around the gentle arc you know the gentle and shit and uh, they were introducing Airy to all the students. Uh, Minetta says to Airy something along the lines of like. Um, I'll see you in ten years, which would if you if you like add up her age, that would be when she'd be eighteen. Bruh, that's that's. Like, dude. <laughs> oh my god. Like, when I read that, I was like, you're kidding me. That's bruh. disgusting. Bruh. Yeah, actually, don't be gonna kill me, bro. I mean, it's horrible. It, it's, it's, it's shock it's, value humor. Like, we're laughing because it's, like, so unabashedly why would you ever write that? I just truly think that Orokoshi pushed it a little far with him. That's the only reason I make this argument. And now we've talked about it in this video for fucking 10 minutes. I mean, to be fair, there's not much content in this chapter anyway, to, so we oh, can't shit. tell. Oh, my That's God. Actually- oh, my God. Uh, okay. What do you think? Okay, so Todoroki's got a new fucking fire move coming up. What do you think? Oh, my God. I know you're not a big fan of Todoroki, but f- put your bias I love, no, aside. No, 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 I love Todoroki. You don't you, you understand. I, I, I did love- then, because I thought you didn't like it. I fucking love Todoroki. Are you kidding me? What the the fuck? Fuck? I swear to God, last fucking video you were talking about how you weren't the biggest fan about Todoroki, and you were talking about how no. people like overhype him and shit. No, I don't. I don't. If if I did say that, I must have been fucking stupid. I'll have to go I, back and refine that then. Because I love Todoroki. He's like in my top five. Well, then you have shitty taste because he's pretty generic. I fucking love him. Fuck you. He's, he's actually. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I thought you agreed with me. That's why I was like, oh, wow, we agree on that Todoroki. I just, Todoroki's like the, um... I agree, I agree on the fact that he's getting too much, like, I, I agree with you. I think what you may have misunderstood was I agree with you on the fact that he's getting way too much screen time. That yeah. he's yeah, becoming... Yeah, I get that. I, I have no issue with him, but I also don't find him one of the most, or one of the more interesting characters either. I think he's, I think <clears> every <throat> manga has a character that fangirls latch onto and, and, and like too much, and that's that character for this show. Yeah, it's sad. My is that is sad. My academia is sad. I think that was uh, Shikamaru in, in Naruto. Uh, <laughs> Shikamaru is a great character, though, let's be honest. Yeah, maybe, maybe Sasuke is a better example. Sasuke, you know, you have the well, fangirls, only fangirl oh, lovers. Dragon Ball Z. Oh, there's such a good example I can't think of right now. Anyway, but yeah, what do you think about Todoroki's new fire move uh, that clearly Endeavor tried to teach him when he was a little kid? It's. I don't. I don't. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't care as much. I don't. I, I, honestly, like, I'm just kind of. 
there's no, nothing can surprise me when it comes to Toriyuki at this point. I just want him to, because what actually what I really want to talk about, fuck Toriyuki. I want to talk about fucking Tetsu, my dude. This man, Tetsu, this, Tetsu, bro, it, red hot Tetsu. Like, bro, this character is worthy of rival. Like, Jesus, mm-hmm. I love it. I was hyped. I was hyped to see him, bro. Like, freaking too fuck. Can we talk about and, that panel, page 13? Oh, my God. The one where he comes out of the fire and he's red hot. And, like, they even describe it that he's, like, red, like, metal, like, red metal. Oh, my God. Can you imagine how cool that's going to look in the anime? Oh, I don't know, because I don't watch the anime. I'm a leader's mom. God. Uh, t-shirt design coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> coming. Uh, Bro, manga only master like, race. Um, no, but yeah, I'm definitely going to see this episode, though, because that color is going to be sexy. I still have yet to see the All Might versus one, 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 four, yeah, one That's five. worth watching uh, in the anime. But no, I mean, bruh. Like, let's just, his design when he comes out of that. I love it. Yeah. I that's, do love that he's really embodying the whole metal thing. It's just like, I'm metal. Your ice ain't going to do shit to me. Your fire ain't going to do shit to me. And uh, I can run at you like a mobile hot stove. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it, man. It's, Didn't your it's, mother ever tell you not to touch the stove when it was hot? <laughs> Yeah, well, that could be speak. like his his cheesy corny line when he's running after a villain. Can you imagine? Like, like he just like bear hugs a villain at, in, in in this red heart hot form, and he's like, "Didn't your mother ever tell you not to touch a hot stove?" <laughs> <laughs> you know so, it would work. So, uh, I mean, that's really about it. I mean, do you have anything else you want to say? I I did actually want your thoughts on what Todoroki's like new fight. Because I got to be honest, I did I do like the end panel with his. I always I'm a sucker for the hand in front of the face pose. I got to be honest. Um, then you love JoJo so much. Oh yeah. Um, but so what do you think? Like what what what? Because what all can you do with fire other than different colors in fire or different shapes of fire? Like, so, <laughs> Kind of these shapes, or or maybe like a like a combination of ice and fire. Well, so what I was, maybe, I don't know. what I was almost thinking was um, every time he brings up like a oh you know concentrate your fire and and you know stronger blah blah blah. I always think of what he did to that Nomu, and uh, which was basically remember he like bear hugged the Nomu and just kind of did like a supernova like you know like like um. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if it's gonna be something like that, but. I imagine it's going to be something to do with concentrating his fire into, like, a really hot point that he can just kind of, like, like an armor-piercing shot of fire. Or he's going to go full mode route and just make a mini sun in his hand. mini what? You cut off. A mini sun in his hand from a full mode Like how father did. Or, well, why not, why not just go all the way and go fucking ace from One Piece and make a huge sun in his hands? Uh, Entei. What is what is that a new ability called? It's called Flame Emperor, right? Uh, Flame em- Flame Commandment, Flame Emperor, Entei, something, one of those things. One of those three things I listed is correct. Coach is gonna make this man go part ace, part king. Just never said, go Natsu. <laughs> Yeah. See, that, that, that's that's the reference I was making earlier about like how a lot of times authors with fire moves, it's like, what do we do with fire? Different colors, different shapes, and that was I've just described the entirety of Natsu's move set. And occasionally throw lightning in there, and that's about it. It's like, all right, we got a different color fire and different shape fire, and sometimes it gets sparky. That's it. Genius. Will you ever uh, read the uh, fairy tale manga from beginning to end? I almost did. I, I read it from beginning to Grandmaster Gain's arc. You didn't watch the anime. No, because the anime is absolute horseshit. You, you realize they censor. Like, it's, they, they got rid of, there was no blood in the anime. Are you aware of this? Oh, yeah. Like, they literally, like, yeah, they, sure. like, I'm not kidding. If there was, like, a stab wound in the manga, like, let's say someone had a knife and stabbed a dude, they would replace it with, like, an ice blast so that it wouldn't bleed. Really? Yes, because the, the time slot for the anime was so early that it was uh, on a time slot for kids. So they literally had to censor out blood. 
Oof. So I kid. said, fuck the anime. <laughs> I'm not reading the manga. Um, but yeah, so no, I, I, I about did. And I was caught up. I was caught up reading it weekly for a long time uh, until I dropped it. But no, I mean, yeah. Would so you, I, you, I have faith in Horikoshi to give us a cool fire move as he has been. He's very good at creating cool, logical, unique moves. So I'm excited to see that. Well, <clears throat> that's about it. I have no prediction. Boring. You know, so I like what... This is the final thing I'm going to state on this, and I, I, I want to know if you agree with me here. I like what Horikoshi's doing. I know what he's doing. He's basically taking the time to slow down during this arc, and this is kind of his way of, of boosting all the characters. Everyone's going to have a newer move or an upgraded move or this and the other thing, and then, of course, that'll help him. So the next time something serious happens, like a serious Chisaki-like arc they're going to have all of these new upgraded moves, right? That makes they, sense. So They are still weaker than the Black... Say again? They are still weaker than the Black Clover universe. Woo-hoo. Right, but that, that's not everything, obviously. Like, the Hunter x Hunter verse is one of the weakest verses, but that doesn't speak about it, the quality of the show. Um, I mean, but, to be fair, a lot of, a lot of Hunter x Hunter characters can't be other characters. It just depends on... If it's verse versus verse, no way. But one we one hell yeah. If you're going pure um, DC... The Hunter x Hunter verse is low as piss. It doesn't matter about the strength of capacity. It's about fucking hacks, speed, durability, and X. Right. It's not just... I can way, it's a, stu- a stupid argument to make. Anyway, um, but the what I'm saying is this arc, it's necessary, but it is certainly not grasping my attention the same way that the gentle shit did. Um, and, and I spoke yes. about this last video, so I won't go too deeply into it, but essentially like I am well aware that this is necessary and it's good to have because downtime is good. And in fact, before you think I'm being one of those fucking idiots, that's like, Ooh, I don't like downtime. I actually really love life, uh, the slice of life aspects of this series. If this was them chilling in the dorms, just, just like being friends, I would love it. And pro- that would probably interest me more than what's happening right now. I gotta be honest. Um, but I like this, because, and, and I think you and me had the same idea here. I think it's just this fight, mostly, is kind of boring me. Like, previous fights yeah. I like, like the Mushroom Girl I thought was great, the the stuff that we got with, um, uh, fuck, the, is it Fukuyomi, the bird guy? Yeah, uh, no, yeah. uh, Tokiyomi. That, what's Fukuyomi? Is that something? Fukuyomi. With the F? Is that from some? Why can't I remember? It's just this series that I can't remember. Yo, Fukuyomi sounds like something. I think it I'm does. Is it Fukuyomi from One Piece? Maybe. Is that right? Or I'll from it later? <laughs> but no. So, like, would would you agree with me? I want to know your thoughts on this. That this fight just seems a little bit less yeah. gripping. This whole is this whole is very trash. I want to say I trash. Call it trash. I just <laughs> yeah. I was, just, I was being extra, but... Yeah, I was, it's like when... Uh, bro, That that's like such a One Piece fandom thing to say, where they call... You know people are calling Jack trash now that he got fucking cut by that one guy? Oh my god. That's <laughs> not, he's trash. Yeah, you know. <laughs> trash. Black. Bro. Black. Black the loud. Black yeah. the loud. Um, so no, I, I'm... And you know, I'm not impatient at all. This is important character development. I think that what it is, it's just going to be there are characters that I like more and there are characters that I like less. This chunk of characters so far, other than Tetsu Tetsu, which has been, that was cool as fuck. Most of it is just stuff I'm eh on. Uh, I imagine that when we get to Bakugo and my boy, Class B man, Jojo Posen motherfucker that I will never remember the name of, even though he is my boy, that's going to be some exciting shit. So, no, he's not fighting him, right? I know. Those are just but, two. I just listed two random people that I am excited for. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, this pretty much. Yeah, I agree. Since this fight is just hella boring. Maybe Hirokoshi can bring it back, but honestly, right now, yeah. I really don't. Well, and I think this kind of it kind of goes into. I don't remember who made the video, but like someone kind of analyzed that like the fights aren't really what My Hero Academia yeah. is strong suit. Yeah. It's the character interaction with the fights. So if you don't yeah. have like. So what made, like, let's say the Chisaki fights interesting, the goal of getting Eri back, and, and the 
complex character dynamics happening. Well, you know, the whole fat gum Hiroshima thing, that was really powerful. The whole, um, <clears throat> you know, Lemillion and Deku uh, going in there with Night Eye, Night Eye dying, Lemillion losing his quirk. Those are the things that made that unique and interesting and really, really, really edge of your seat because you care about these characters because the one, if there's one thing that Horikoshi's good at, it's writing really good characters. So when you have this, which is mostly just you know, hey, why'd you break up our one-on-one -on -one fight? Oh, you know, I just did. Okay. Uh, you know, it's just, it's, there's really not a lot gripping here. So unless you really care about, oh, what's Ida's new move or what's Todoroki's new move? If you don't, unless you care about that, like a lot, there's not a lot to hang on for these. So I don't find them bad at all. These chapters, I find them more as just leisure reads. It's not something that's, that I'm on the edge of my seat for, but it's just kind of like a, yeah, okay. <laughs> that's how I word it. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm looking forward to some of the later fights, and I'm also heavily looking forward to whatever the arc is after this, because you should have seen me during the gentle shit, some of the most hyped I've been for this series during the, the gentle La Brava stuff. Like, when we get into an, a more character-driven arc, plot-driven arc like that, you're going to see us get hyped as fuck. So don't think that we don't like this series or anything like that. It's just that we're waiting for that plot-driven, yeah, you know, my hero gets strong, so, yeah, that's my final words on that one.